Hello and welcome back. I'm Luke, Sigmaster Luke, and we had just made a sword. Now we're going to make the net gun. That's what the um, sheriff is going to be using to stop the mad bloxer. So he's going to be having a net gun, which he can shoot the, uh, the mad bloxer with, and it will block the mad bloxer. Okay, so I spent a little bit of time thinking about this, and I think a good mesh or a good uh, model for a net gun would be a gear that I made a while ago called the tripwire gun where it makes tripwires um, so what we're gonna wanna do is insert we're gonna search for it in models tripwire this one right here so tripwire I think this gun looks like it could shoot nets so we're gonna be using this one um, so we're just gonna close the toolbox again this thing looks like a net gun for sure okay so insert object Looks like it's directly the gear from uh, from the website catalog. Um, so I cut it. And I'm going to paste it into the starter pack. I'm going to rename it to Netgun. All right. So things you want to keep and get rid of. We're obviously going to want to. We can remove the thumbnail. It doesn't matter. Um, we're going to want to keep the sound. We can get rid of all the scripts because we're going to be recoding. So I'm actually, yeah, get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, so we want to insert, insert a script, insert a local script, and like the sword, a remote event. Okay, so my name at the top, both scripts. All right. Hmm. So, what do we want to do first for the net gun? Um, hmm. So this is how it's gonna work. Yeah, we're gonna start with the local script, and we're gonna have it um, start off by defining the tool. And the handle. Alright, so we've got the tool and the handle. Um, let's get an unequipped function going. So tool.equipped, connect, then create a function, and then cap it. Okay. So unequipped, what are we going to want to do? Um, from the equipped, we can listen for when the mouse is fired, when the mouse is uh, clicked. So let's do that. Um, unequipped in a local script uh, lets you access the parameter of mouse. So we're going to call it mouse. So let's see. Like the sword, we're also going to want to keep track of when it's equipped and when it's not. So we're going to say equipped equals true. And if the mouse is here, make sure it exists. Sometimes in random rare cases, um, maybe it won't exist. So we're just going to be safe, better safe than sorry. Just uh, pretend that it might not exist and check. Okay, um, so when you first equip the gun, the net gun, you're going to want to set the icon. So mouse icon. RB X asset. Semicolon forward forward slash textures backslash backslash gun cursor dot PNG. Alright, so we're setting the mouse icon to the default um, tool icon. And then we're going to listen to the mouse button 1 event. So button 1 on the mouse, there's a function on the mouse. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's an event on the mouse called button 1 down. And that's pretty much when you click. So when this is fired, we're going to connect it to the function that we're making right here. inside this function, what do we want it to do? Well, we're going to want it to, when you click, you want to change the cursor to the uh, 
gun weight cursor. Alright, so when you hit, it's going to show the reloading cursor, and then when it's uh, done, set it back to the normal default cursor. This is going to be a variable that we're going to make, so it's going to be called reload time. Actually, fire rate is more, more of a proper description of what it is. I'm going to set that to 1. One second. I'm putting it up here so that you can change it easily. So that if you want to tweak some values in the game, um, like maybe we think you can fire too quickly, you just jump in the code and change this right here. It's super easy. You don't need to go reading through the code to find this. Okay, so that's our fire rate. Um, but it doesn't really do anything because we don't have a debounce yet. So let's create a debounce. Um, we're going to call that check. So. Check equals, we're going to make it true actually. Check equals true. So, right here we're going to do. So, if, if check is true, then check equals false. Then you're going to have this, have all the code that fires, and then you're going to wait one, or wait the fire rate, and then you set check to true again. So, what happens is you're able to fire it. Right, you're able to fire it um, because check is true, and then while it's firing, you set it to false, and you have to wait this uh, until it's done firing, and then you set check to true again, so that while it's firing, you're never able to fire it again. Um, so you that that's what a proper debounce looks like. Okay, so we have check all sorted out. Um, so that's how you make a simple debounce, and let's also in this line make sure that the humanoid exists. So local humanoid equal to tool.parent I'm going to see if there's a humanoid so we just search for a humanoid inside the tools parent um, the tool parent should um, when you get equipped the tools parent should be the character and then we're looking for a humanoid just to make sure um, so if humanoid check and humanoid and you want to make sure that your character is alive, right? Um, you should only be able to fire the net gun if you're alive. So we're checking to make sure that your health is over zero, meaning that you're not blocked. Um, other things we're also going to need are probably your torso and your head. So let's just define those as well. I'm just going to copy this, paste it here, do the same thing for torso. There's your torso. Okay, and we're going to want to make sure these exist too, so and head and torso. Done. Okay, so in this code, right in here is where we should make the gunfire. So what do we want to do? We're going to want to play sound. And so we're going to make a raycast. This is how we're going to do this. Local hit, comma, and pose. Equals cast array. Hit dot position vector range tool dot baron okay so we're gonna make a function called cast ray and inside the function cast ray we're gonna hand it um, a start pose which is gonna be the head position uh, I like to use the head position for casting rays for weapons because when you're zoomed in fully in game when you're zoomed in um, that's what feels right for a shooter is that the, it feels like you should whatever you click on that is where you sh the bullet should go or whatever you're shooting should go so you're gonna cast the ray from the center of the screen and the center of the screen when you're in first person is the head position you're gonna want a vector um, this vector let's let's define a vector 
So a vector is like a direction. It's a, a vector 3. So if you look at a part, the handle of this tool, this is a vector 3. It has three different values. It's a position, though. Um, X, Y, and Z. Um, a vector can also be considered a, a direction. And so we're going to be considering this as a direction. So local vec equals. And this is how directions work. Um, we're going to take the mouse dot hit dot p. So the mouse has a um, a property called hit. That's whatever the mouse um, currently is on top of. Dot hit is a C frame value on mouse, and then p dot p is a is just getting the position of a C frame. So you're getting the C frame from the mouse, and you're getting the position from the C frame. Then we're going to subtract the head dot position. By doing this, it's pretty much saying um, from this position to this position. That's how you're creating this this direction out of vector. And then we're going to want to uh, dot unit it. This is to um, make it a unit vector, which means that its length is 1. So its length is exactly the distance of 1. OK, so we've, we've made a vector. A vector, again, is just a direction. And then we're going to want to define the range. So let's go up here and do this. How far can this net gun shoot? We're going to make it 100 studs. We're going to make it 200, just to make it feel feel good. OK, so that's that. Um, but we still need to make this function that's called cast array. And this, this function called cast array is going to give back an end pose and a hit, or hit and an end pose. It's going to give back two things in this exact order. So you got to make sure that the first one is, uh, the thing, is the object that it hit, and the second one is a position that it hit. I've actually made this function, and I use this quite a bit. So if we actually go back here, if we search for a tripwire, I probably use the function. Yes. So here's the the net gun that we'd use. Um, if you go into the local script, some messy code. I I like to code really tightly, but if you see right here, we have a cast ray function, and we have a check intangible. Um, the cast array uses the check intangible function. So you're going to want to copy these two functions from the uh, from a gear. Um, normally this gear, if you search uh, the tripwire device, you'll find it in the local script. So I'm going to delete that again and go back to our one that we were working on. So back in the local script uh, where we needed the cast array function, let's go over here, make some room for these, and paste it. Okay, so... These are kind of messy. Um, I'm going to briefly explain what they do. So you give it a start pose, a vector, a length, an ignore list, and a delay of hit. We're going to get rid of, well, we're just going to leave that actually. Um, but you don't necessarily need this here. Um, so that's what you give it. And what it aims to return is what it, what the ray hits and what the end pose does. So what is a ray? A ray is like a line, you can imagine, in, in this three-dimensional world that we're working in. It's like a line, like it's just a single line. Um, but it's a line with a direction, so it's going one way. So it's got a start pose, and it goes infinitely in one direction. And so when you're doing a ray cast, typically what you mean is you're, you're making a ray, and you're seeing what the first object it hits is. So in this function that, we're, that I'm showing you right here, um, it does a Roblox raycast, find part on ray, um, but it does it tries to keep things um, kind of neat for you. Um, and it gives you something that you can ignore. So we have an ignore list right here. And then what I like to do is make a check intangible list, and then I'll recast the ray if it needs to. So if it hits something like your own character, or if it hits water, or if it hits something named effect, um, it will ignore that. So that's what the check intangible function does, is it, it does a little check, a little dance for you. OK, so it will recast it if it hits something that it shouldn't hit from where it hit. Uh, you don't really know need to know much about this. This is a little bit complicated. Um, and this code is actually kind of old, so I'd, I might want to update it a little bit. Um, really long, too. We don't need you don't need to get rid of this, but I'm going to um, just this little section. 
So this is like the little check where if it if it hits anything that's named handle, it's going to ignore it. If it hits anything named effect, it's going to ignore it. If it hits anything named bullet, it's going to ignore it. We're going to get rid of some of these. Um, hmm. Looks pretty good. We're going to get rid of this can glide false part. You might want to do that too. Get rid of the um, can glide false. And it also checks to make sure that you're not hitting the tools parent. Oh, this is very important. Right here, it's trying to use SP as a value. You want to change that to tool. In fact, let's, if you do control H, you can search for um, SP and you replace it with tool. Find. Nope. You don't want to replace that one. You don't want to replace that. Okay, then we're good. There's that one place in the script where it says uh, SP instead of tool. You're going to want to put tool there. So what it's doing is making sure that you're not hitting your own character. And so this, this Raycast function takes care of all the complicated stuff. All you do is give it a, a starting position, a direction that you want to cast, and how far you want to cast. That's what we give the range. And then also an ignore list, which would be the tools parent. Okay, so this will return hit and end pose. What's going to happen is because this is on a local script, the local script isn't allowed to do very much because we have filtering enabled on our game. So if you go back to workspace over here, um, oh, let's, uh, let's enable that actually. So <laughs> filtering enabled, um, this makes your game safe and uh, stops lots of exploits. So we're going to enable that. <laughs> that's, that's why we're using remote event. Um, and when, you're, when your game is filtering enabled, that means local scripts can't do very much. A server script has to do all the work, um, a, lot, a lot of the heavy work. Um, so we're going to call the event, this event, remote event. Actually, let's define that at the top of our script. Local event equals tool wait for child. Remote event. Okay, and we're going to be telling the server script to do stuff. Unlike the sword, um, the sword, the server script was doing mo most of it, and they're just telling the local script to do run animations. For this gun, for the net gun, we're going to have the uh, local script do all the raycast so that it feels nice for the client, um, but when the raycast hits stuff, it's going to send its results to the server script, and the server script's going to do... Uh, the damage and stuff, because client scripts, when filtering enabled, can't damage players or make parts or all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to send the results of this raycast to the to the server script. So event fire server. I'm going to say first of all, it's going to be fire because we're telling it that we we fired the gun. Um, next is going to be end pose. So this is where the where it ends, and then we're going to give it the hit. Uh, I switched the order here. So you see the raycast returns a hit and an impose. Uh, I just wanted to make sure the first value in here, or the next next value is going to exist. Hit might not exist. Like if you aim at the sky, it might be nil. So we're going to put that one last. Okay, so I think that's that. Um, oh, right here, actually. <laughs> just a little thing that we should do. Make sure the mouse still exists, because after you wait, anything could change. So we just want to make sure this mouse still exists here by doing that. Um, okay, cool. Uh, let's let's uh while we're in this script, let's uh let's make it fire, make the fire sound. So right in here, we're gonna want to make the fire sound play. We need to define the fire sound. So if we go look in the gun right here. Uh, net gun under the tool handle is the fire sound, so we gotta make a variable for that. Local fire sound equals handle wait for child fire sound capital S. All right, so we have fire sound right there, and we play it every time you go to fire the gun. 
Um, another thing we need to do is make the unequip function. So tool dot unequip connect function and close parenthesis. Okay, so in here we just want to do equip just to make sure um, because we're setting the equip to true and over here we gotta set it to false just so that in our code we know when the when the tool is actually equipped or not looks good looks good okay so in our oh one thing another thing we forgot to do is name these scripts so we know what they are when they have problems or when they work good <laughs> I don't know um, we gotta put in uh, names for these just so it, we know what they are netgun script and netgun local script. Okay. And that's it for this video. Be sure to check out the next one. See you guys in a minute. Roblox, where you make the game.